Well, we, <laughs> we talk <laughs> about cutting it fine and taking it to the line. Literally to the last minute at 4.30. Last time we had our biometric photos produced for our residency application, we had them done at the place behind us. But we've had it on good authority that the place to go is Photo Alley, which is just around the corner. So we're going to give that one a try this time. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Of course, um, to go into a shop, you have to wear a mask. How's that going to work with a biometric photo? <laughs> biometric photos with masks on. Let's see how that works out. If you want to find Photo Alley, just come down the main street of Cash until you see the tomb at the intersection here. There is the mosque at the bottom and the further on you can go to the port. Come around this corner and right here you will find Photo Alley. Very simple and the guy speaks great English. Okay, so we are all biometric photoed up. Yeah, that was really easy too. It's a yeah. nice, easy process. Look how pretty I am. You're not going to show yours, are you? Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> I didn't know if you could smile or not, because I look like a witch if I don't smile. Because normally they don't like to smile. <laughs> okay, so next stop is to the insurance place, and we're going to get a quote to see how much they're going to give us for the Allianz insurance. Yeah, and how that compares to the quote that I met at Marina. Yep. As far as we know, this is the only insurance place in town. Of course, Amit at the marina has said that he has an agent that has given him a quote, but we'll, we'll go in here and see what they've got to say. I'd call that a success. Yeah, um, took a little bit of time. Um, even though we are, our details were mostly in the system from our previous application there, I think the time consumed is changing from the egg K Segorta, which we used previously to the Allianz insurance this time. Originally they quoted us uh, 1,428 Turkish Lira per person for the 12 month health insurance policy. Apparently that covered a big, big network, doctors, hospitals, uh, private clinics all across Turkey. But we said, look, you know, really we're only going to be up and down the coast, Maybe. mostly around cash. Do you have something different? And they said, well, we have a smaller network policy, which worked out to a thousand Turkish Lira per person, per policy. So we went so, with that. <laughs> you know, when you look at that, that is uh, a 33% saving on the original quote mm. uh, overall. And Allianz um, covers any COVID related treatment that you may or may not need as well, just for anybody that's interested. So the step now is to go back to the boat. Tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon, we have a meeting with Amit in the marina. He will make the online application for our Ekemet. And once that is in the system, then that basically allows us to stay until uh, if they process the whole thing. So even though our three-month visa runs out on the 23rd yeah. of October. October, once we've got that application in, then that acts as a, a visa extension, if you like, at least on paper. Yeah. So um, fingers crossed, we yeah. should, should have it all done and dusted uh, well before the end of this month. Yeah, it's a bit exciting. It is. 4.30 on Tuesday afternoon and we've just spent the last hour and a bit with Umit in the Cash Marina office and he was been bashing away at the keyboard with some certain amount of frustration towards the end when the server wouldn't connect properly but we now have our appointment for heading down to Kemmer yep. to get uh, to put in our full paperwork for our residency application yes. so that is the that's well mine is on the 13th of November which is a Friday yay Friday 13th and Barry's is on the following Monday so Amit said he's got a friend down there and he can arrange for my date to be moved in conjunction with Ansh's date but it can't be done now because it's too ahead of time we've got to yeah. do, do that closer to the date but yeah. basically it's all done yeah and um, the paperwork is in which yeah. is a good thing because now uh, that means our 90 day visa 
is extended until, until, they, until they say they either, it either says, yeah. yep, you've got your visa yeah. or uh, you've yeah. got your residency or no, you're not having one, yeah. you better bugger off yeah. quick. One thing we've got to do though, we've got to go to the local offices and pay. Oh, the tax it. office. Yeah. 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 And we have to have a special code on our phone that lets us in to government buildings, which yes. we've got. We've got that bit already. So, yeah. so still a bit more running around to do. Yeah, but the main but basically, big thing's been done. Basically, the big stuff's done, yeah. so that's good. Down below us is Cash Marina, and you might be thinking, wow, you've walked a long way to get so high up for a view like that, but you're wrong. This is a rental car. <laughs> hey, freedom! But the real reason that we've got the rental car is not just about freedom and exploring new places around Cash, it's because we're going to Kemmer. Yes, it's about a three hour drive uh, to the east. Yeah. And the reason we're going to Kemmer is because today is the final step really in our application for our 12 month Turkish residency card. So we've got to go to Kemmer for the interview, they stamp a lot of papers, ask us a couple of questions and they say, welcome to Turkey. <laughs> At least we know where we're going this time. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Driving along the D400, which is basically the, the major road that runs uh, along the coast or as close to the coast as it can get. And you know, the road's absolutely brilliant. It's super wide, there's passing lanes for both ways, you know, and a good distance. And super well maintained, absolutely brilliant driving in Turkey. It's just so easy. You do have to be aware that there are quite a few checkpoints, police checkpoints. And we just went through one and they just waved us through. Um, they do look for people who have not done their uh, national army service. So that's one of the main things they're looking for, or probably vehicles that just look shabby or people not wearing seatbelts. Or um, masks. Or masks. <laughs> um, but we weren't wearing our masks and we just got waved through. So yeah, driving in Turkey is, is a breeze, really. Yeah, last time uh, we were in ABC at Kekova, we actually went in and around these sort of little clumps of islands. That's yeah. where Smuggler's Cove is. So you go in at that end, and then you cut, we came out of that gap there, mm. and uh, came across this harbour. And as you can see, this is kind of um, a floodplain here. Mm. So there's an awful lot of silt that washes down here out into that area there so you could guess that the anchorage holding would be fairly good in this silty muddy sand in that area there so so that's something else to look out for isn't it when you're looking at when you're anchorages. looking for anchorage yeah, yeah if you if you can see a large floodplain like this um you know that the holding is going to be really good love this place and i keep saying it <laughs> Getting organised this morning, we skipped breakfast and it's now just after midday. So we've just passed through this lagoon area here and uh, we found this little restaurant right on the edge of the lagoon and uh, we're having lunch! Yay! Yeah. I ordered most of it in Turkish, I was really chuffed. Yeah, I just pointed at what I wanted on the menu. And they understood us both. <laughs> yeah. So we get along in Turkish. <laughs> So you're having what? Lamb chops? Lamb chops. Oh, no, and I'm having salad. a chicken shish. Yeah. Yum. So we're about halfway there now, I think. Yeah. yeah. And we've got plenty of time, oh, so time. that's good. Well, we, <laughs> <laughs> Talk about cutting it fine and taking it to the line. Literally to the last minute at 4.30. Yeah, so we're here at Kemen now. We, we called into the uh, office where you get your Turkish Ignite application for, uh, residency. for residency processed. And luckily we went in an hour early 
and the guy, nice guy, real nice guy, spoke real good English, he said, okay, yeah, I can process the paperwork now. Uh, my boss says it's okay to do both now. Um, but, but bec because it's not a renewal of your residency, old, old residency old one, card, you need to pay uh, a brand new... A one-time entry visa into Turkey. Yeah. That was 695 lira, lira each. each. And I'm thinking, oh crap, have I got enough cash? <laughs> Is there enough on the card? Because we don't have internet access because our internet's been blocked because we haven't got our residency cards yet. <laughs> anyway, 300 meters from this office to the tax office, I get there, I give him 900 lira in cash and presents the card and he goes, no, we don't take cards, we no. only process cash. And he didn't speak English and we didn't really speak Turkish so Google got a really good workout translated. So he took the 900 and said you need to go and get some cash from a bank but then we, we looked at our watch and it was 20 minutes past 4 and they close at 4.30. Yeah, like literally. So I left answer there, I said Don't, if they try and throw you out you make sure you get that 900 lira back. So I had to run the 300 metres back. Luckily there's a hole in the wall machine here at the car park so I had the smart idea of just jumping in the car and driving back and I literally ran through the front door, presented the extra cash to the man as it went just, ding, as, just, just as he put the sign up saying closed. <laughs> in the meantime I'd had a Google Translate conversation with him and he, where he, he sort of started flustered and I was kind of worried. I said, look, we're terribly sorry, we didn't know. And he went, it's okay, don't worry. I'll give you the money back if it doesn't work. So that was all right. <laughs> So now we've come back to the uh, residency office and yes, he's and processed all of the paperwork. Nice we've got man. our paper temporary residency permits. Well, um, we still, which means we still can't get any telephone, internet, internet or, telephone, or anything yeah. because um, Until they, we have the they card. need the card. <laughs> and he said it could take up to two months for the cards to be processed out of Antalya because yeah. it slows down in the winter apparently. It's been processed, we've been approved, we have temporary uh, Turkish residency. Uh, now we just October wait for the card, 2021. and then we can go online real time. <laughs> I'm now going to drive three hours back to Cash, and, and, I, and I, I'm going to have a large beer. Did you save enough money to buy um, petrol if we need? I've got some cash spare if we need to put <laughs> petrol in the car. Because <laughs> we both completely emptied our wallets when we got in there. That's good. All right, let's go. Right, then, shall we? let's go back to Cash and have a beer, eh? <laughs> There's a saying in the boating community, everybody wants to be captain until it's time to do captain shit. It's four o'clock in the morning, we've got a bit of a blow coming through, a bit of lightning out on the horizon. So I'm up, closing all the hatches, bringing stuff in it out of the cockpit that's going to blow away potentially, because right now we're getting gusts of up to 25 knots. And looking at the lightning and the clouds I can see on the horizon, this could be quite a big blow coming through. Now Kev's moved on to the other side. We've taken the exhaust manifold off, uh, but that also includes taking off the heat exchanger, which is kind of a good thing because I've wanted to open up the heat exchanger for some time and check inside for bits of impeller and also make sure it's not uh, blocked up. And if it is, give it a clean out. So here are the engine exhaust ports from the four cylinders. And apart from just a little bit of carbon which you'd expect it's looking actually quite good Kev seems to be quite pleased with it so now we've got the exhaust manifold off the water pumps got to come off which is basically this lot here uh, we're going to try and keep it as intact as possible and just disengage it from the head or the block and drop it drop it forward and then that should give us full access to the cylinder head so this is the the rocket cover and so we're just persuading it with a gentle persuasion to part company. That's it. <laughs> this is a very Clean interesting moment of truth. So you reckon that's clean as a whistle? Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So this has got to come off to access the yeah. uh, the yeah. head, to right. the cylinder head. The rocker assembly yeah. with these bolts here. Right comes off first that takes your rocker assembly as a whole unit yeah right leaves your valves intact on the head okay then what we do is we take the head bolts off okay all right take those head bolts off then you'll have to tap this until it prizes away from the head gasket and that should all lift off right are these bolts torqued 
They will be, yeah. They, okay, so when we put them back, they have to be a specific talk. Yeah, same as the head. I tell you what, I'm glad you're here, Kev. Um, our viewers who suggested strongly that we, you know, carry out this this kind of work all seem to be under the false illusion that I was capable of doing this. And to be honest with you, watching you do it, you're making it look very, very easy. And to me, it's quite daunting. So <laughs> I think it's beyond my pay grade. No, it's not. You just need to put that in the box now. The, the tappet assembly bolts, right? Or rocker arm bolts, whatever so you want to call them. Marked so aft, forward, yep. starboard, port. Yep. And there's two on each pedestal. Right. All right. So that's a great little idea to make sure you get the right bolts back into the right hole. Ah, oh, what? What that? What is that? That's your push. One, that's a push rod. Okay. A push rod. Oh, I see. That thing that we the took off does of the does that. Yeah. The, the load cam at the bottom of the engine. Right. Pushes it up and then puts the pushes the rocker and opens yeah. and closes your valves. Huh. You've got one each cylinder, one for inlet, one for exhaust, inlet exhaust. So and that opens, that shut, that shuts, that opens. Wow. And it's the way you cam is um, got different uh, lobes on it, determines whether that opens or that closes or whatever. Okay. Hmm. Kev is now removing the cylinder head bolts, is that right? Yep. And he's got this dirty great big pry bar to get leverage on them because they were fairly, fairly tight. I would have probably been brave enough to do that. <laughs> I would have called in the experts at this point. So are you going to need another one of those marked pieces of paper for these bolts? Yes. Right, I'll get that sorted out. Kev's like the surgeon in theatre, and I'm the attendant nurse. Well, this wonderful little collection is all of the head of bolts, and we've put them in the positions that they go back onto the engine. We will have, of course, to get the service manual and find out which sequence they get tightened down in and exactly what the torque settings are, because we will be tightening these back down with a torque wrench. Now, to take the cylinder head off, and the big reveal. Now we've got the water pump separated from the front end of the cylinder head. Kev's just using his pry bar to break the seal on the cylinder head gasket, which probably hasn't been removed in the lifetime of the boat. And there it goes. Ooh, is that normal? That's just mixture, that's carbon. I mean, I have no idea what they should look like. Oh no, they look like that, don't they? That's okay. What we'll do, we can uh, turn the engine over and get those right up flush to the top. But what you can do in the meantime is if you feel inside there, you'll feel a little bit of carbon around the top of the bores. Right. Well, that's nothing to worry about because the bores are not scratched. Okay. They're fine. What we'll do, get some... Uh, Get some kitchen roll, yeah. clean as much shit off there as you can and I can see what I'm looking at. Okay. But from feel, there's nothing wrong with the board. This here, it's just carbon. Right. Now you get carbon on all engines. Okay. Some worse than others and probably... Uh, and the coolant in there is just because we've taken the head off yeah, and it's yeah, just run yeah. in. Yeah, that's just come from these little holes here. Oh, okay. Just right. still coolant inside the uh, head gasket. But the rest of it... Looks fine. All looks good. Yeah. I mean, it's just carbon build-up. If you push the pistons right up to the top, we can clean all that off. Okay, well, let's do what we can now. So, we've got to this stage, Kev. Yeah. And we haven't seen any signs of any metal fragments no. at all. No, you've got no, car you've got no metal scratchings on the bores. Okay. You've got a little bit of carbon build-up on the top, but yeah. you, you will have that. Okay. No. All right. Well, that's a huge relief. Nothing on to um, You know, and and yeah, we've got to get this gasket replaced. One gasket. One gasket. And we've got to find out whether that's a thirteen, well, one point three mil or one point five mil. So we're now looking at the underside of the head, yeah. basically the top part of the cylinders, really, isn't it? Yeah, but um, I don't quite see any massive damage there at all. Injectors. 
what to do if it's clean, but that's really, no, there's no sign of any damage to the valves. Fine, just needs a good clean. A good clean. Well, this is good news. Well. <laughs> <laughs> clean up time. It's a huge relief. Um, Kev's done a marvellous job here today. Couldn't have done it without him and completely relieved that we found no metal fragments at all in any of the places where people had asked us to look and uh, expect them. So that's great news. And as I called Iden to the boat to just confirm exactly what gaskets we needed ordering, he said to me, uh, look, you know, I can take all this, these parts back to the workshop and have them all properly uh, pressure cleaned so they're absolutely pristine. And I'll also uh, take apart your... Um, uh, the, va um, the valves. I'm very tired, so I'm losing my words now. Uh, so he's going to take the valves apart and clean those all up because there's quite a bit of carbon inside there, as we would expect from not having the turbo attached for a little while. So, a day of cleaning the engine that's now been more exposed to me for cleaning tomorrow, and then um, Iden will get those parts cleaned and back to me day after tomorrow. We should have the turbo rebuilt from the guy in Istanbul by uh, probably Wednesday of next week, so a week away, and they'll also have the gaskets by then. So Kev and I are quite confident by Friday of next week, which is uh, um, seven, eight, nine, de nine days away, um, we'll have the engine back together and we'll be able to run it, and it'll be pristine. I'm, I've got my backpack on. I'm gonna buy a beer now.